Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, October 20th. Thanks so much for joining us. If you were watching us last week right here on GMS 89, and we hope you were, we were talking about the top 10 public high schools in the San Antonio metro area. And we've got a new list this week, and the folks over at NEISD should be super duper proud. Yes, now we have the top 10 best elementary schools in the San Antonio area. And like Mark was saying, NEISD has the most schools on that list. Six out of the 10, but let's go through the list. The first two are actually charter schools. Number one, Basis San Antonio Primary, that's the Medical Center campus. Also, uh, Basis San Antonio Primary North Central campus. We have Wilderness Oak Elementary and Hardy Oak Elementary. We have Eleanor Kolitz, Hebrew Language Academy, coming in at number five. And number six, we have Randolph Elementary School. Congratulations to Encino Park Elementary School. And Cibolo Green Elementary School. Roan Forest Elementary. And Vineyard Ranch Elementary School. Congrats, guys. Wow, that's fantastic. Again, this is a list released by the same company, Niche, a company that gathers and analyzes data reviews and surveys to come up with said rankings. Yeah, so if you want to see this full list, again, you can go to our website. We have it on KSAT.com. If you are just now turning, tuning in, here are some of the stories we've been working on. We call it today's 9 at 9. Election Day is just two weeks away and more than 28 million Americans have already voted early. Lone Star State is leading the country in early voting totals with more than 4 million Texans casting their ballots. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals says Texas election officials can continue to reject mail-in ballots due to mismatched signatures and are not required to notify a voter until after the election. The Commission on Presidential Debates announcing a change ahead of the second presidential debate Thursday night. At the start of each segment, each candidate will be given two minutes to answer a question and the other person's microphone will be muted. Researchers in the UK are getting ready to start a controversial experiment that will infect healthy volunteers with COVID-19. They plan to study the disease in hopes of speeding up development of a vaccine. The clock is ticking for Democrats and Republicans to reach a COVID-19 stimulus deal. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi set a deadline for today for both sides to come together to restore benefits before Election Day. The U.S. Justice Department says six Russian military officers have been charged in an alleged worldwide cyber attack on other countries' infrastructure and elections. The U.K. is also accusing them of carrying out cyber attacks on the 2020 Olympics. Jeff Bridges announced on social media that he's being treated for lymphoma. The 70 year old actor said he understands the disease is serious and promised to keep his fans posted on his recovery. The World Series between the LA Dodgers and the Tampa Bay Rays begins tonight. Due to the pandemic, the entire series will be held at the brand new Globe Life Field in Arlington. The peak of the annual Orionids meteor shower will be tonight into early tomorrow morning. That's when you can expect to see up to 30 shooting stars an hour. The biggest show in the fall night sky. And that's today's 9 at 9. And we'll be tracking some of the other top local stories coming up here in just a matter of minutes. But for now, let's check in with Justin about possibly good news starting next week. Yeah, we're getting excited. We've got two fronts that we're talking about in the seven day forecast, and we actually have some rain in the seven day forecast. It feels like it's been forever since we've got to talk about actual rain chances. Uh, let's talk about temperatures here. Uh, what we got going on around the area. San Antonio's at 75, New Braunfels at 78, Uvalde 75. I want to throw Amarillo in there. It's at 76 right now, or 46, not 76, 46. It's cold up there. They still got some cold air up to the north. We're still in the warm and humid uh, air mass down here across deep south Texas. That sticks around for the next couple of days. We've seen a couple of showers here and there too this morning. So if you got a quick downpour uh, this morning, you don't be surprised. We're going to see a few more of these next couple of mornings. You can see that in the visible satellite picture and radar. Very quick moving showers uh, tracking through San Antonio. They'll last for about, you know, 30 seconds or so, and then they'll be done. But they may uh, cause for a few wet, slick spots on the road. Temperatures up around uh, 90 this afternoon. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We do have those fronts to talk about, and we'll tell you when we think rain chances will pick up. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. If you don't have to head into work till now, you consider yourself quite lucky. We had a very ugly morning commute earlier today through the early edition of GMSB. Right right now, we are looking at incident-free area over there at 90 at Zarzamora.
And top stories we are following today. We are learning new details about a crash where people, police say, a man was killed while crossing Loop 410 on the west side. We have this story's late breaking news earlier today on GMSA. The crash happened around 4 this morning in the 7300 block of Loop 410, not far from Culebra Road exit. Police tell us the man walking across the southbound lanes of 410 when the driver of a Ford F-250 pickup hit him. Investigators say the driver was unable to avoid hitting the man and is not expected to face charges. The man was pronounced dead at the scene right now. We're still waiting to learn his name. And we told you it was an ugly commute. There was another crash. This one on the northwest side sent a woman to the hospital overnight. Police tell us the woman was in critical condition after she was thrown during a, from her vehicle during a rollover crash. Now, it happened around 3 this morning, also on Loop 410 near Cherry Ridge. Officers say the woman was the passenger in a Jeep when the driver lost control and crashed. Investigators are trying to determine if alcohol may have played a role in the crash. They tell us no other vehicle were involved. The San Antonio cycling community is coming together this evening to honor a cyclist killed by a suspected drunk driver. Tito Bradshaw would have been turning 37 today, but he was killed on his way home back in April of 2019. There'll be a virtual ride in his honor tonight. Riders can start from wherever they choose and ride by his Memorial Ghost Bike located at 1938 East Houston Street. While at the Memorial site, riders are encouraged to take a photo and to share it online using the hashtag Tito Bradshaw Forever. This morning, Bear County Commissioner's Court will hear details on a plan to help local bars reopen. The Bear County Restaurant and Beverage COVID-19 grant program will include about $3 million in grants for restaurants and bars impacted by the pandemic. It comes after Judge Nelson Wolf announced last week that the bars that hadn't already reopened as restaurants could open their doors as long as they followed certain restrictions. He says since the announcement, only 10 bar owners have contacted his office about wanting to reopen. Judge Wolf plans to file paperwork today and the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission would take up to 48 hours to approve the filing, so bars should be able to open later this week or early next week. If the commissioner's court approves the grant program to help bars, owners will be able to apply for up to $25,000 starting on Monday. Our Garrett Berenger is tracking the commissioner's court meeting, which starts at 10 a.m. today, and we'll have an update in our later newscast. Two other headlines. A police officer driving his cruiser hits a man on a moped. The department is trying to figure out if it was intentional. And the baby panda gets its first look beyond the den. Our David Sears is here this morning. Morning, David. It's your Tuesday morning. Oh, uh, we're ready, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. So we got that for you. But first, we're going to start in Providence, Rhode Island. Did you see that right there? We can show it to you again. That is a moped making a hard right turn. Then you see the police officer chasing it in that cruiser. You can barely hear the crash, but you can see the results. The moped and the rider are lying down on a curb right there, surrounded by officers. This is happening in Providence. The rider suffered some serious injuries. Police claim the officer driving that cruiser hit the guy on the moped on purpose. That's, that's according to witnesses. So far, the police aren't sure exactly what happened, but they are investigating. They're trying to figure out why the cruiser is on the curb. They won't say yet if there's any damage to that cruiser. Earlier, there was a motorcycle rally taking place on the street. Some 300 dirt bikes and ATVs riding illegally through the city for several hours. Police were trying to follow them to get them out of the city, but say they were not chasing them. Leaders of the Black Lives Matter want the officers to face charges. Police did say the moped would have been street legal, but it wasn't registered and didn't have any plates on it. All right, now you're looking at a canal in Lindenhurst, New York. It's a village on Lock Island and watch right up here. See that? car involved in the three car crash ends up in the canal. The accident in the water, the car started to sink. You can see several good Samaritans start to jump in and help save the driver and the passenger. They were able to get to the driver first. Mustafa Tosan described how they were able to get that man out of that car. I had his wrist. Somebody had his shirt. Somebody had his pants. It was an amazement. It was just people acting out of compassion. Yeah, there's about five guys in all trying to save those folks. A 78 year old man pulled to safety, but then things got really tense. His 78 year old wife was the passenger in the car and the car started to go under. The rescuers were able to break the back window. They got to her, got her out and then resuscitated her. The good news is the couple was taken to the hospital and police say they are both expected to be OK. All right, let's take you inside the home of Candace Nelson. She is under the kitchen table with her three kids and you because an earthquake just happened. It measured 7.5 on the Richter scale. It hit the remote area of Alaska. 
while she was under the table, the aftershock started hitting. You can see the chair moving around, stuff on the shelves, rattling around, and the pictures on the wall start shaking right there. Watch this picture up there, that little, yeah, look at that. That's from an aftershock. A national tsunami warning went out. The earthquake created waves as high as four feet. That warning went out to 500 miles of coastline. All right, now you're just off the southernmost coast of Alaska, and that's a deer not exactly enjoying a afternoon swim. The deer ended up in the current 49 degree water. It swam right up to the Coast Guard rescue boat. They were able to put it aboard and then get it to shore and dry land. Oh, the deer so happy. All right, so now you're looking at Mama Panda and Baby Panda in the Smithsonian National Zoo Panda Den. Mama decided it was time to take Baby out for a little walk, sort of. Here, let me help you out of the den. <laughs> Let me help you out of the den. Okay, the baby is like eight weeks old. Oh. So it's only a couple of months. But she takes the panda baby out. They hang out for a few minutes, and then she'll turn around and go back in the den. But every time they come out, they stay a little longer. So baby panda will start walking at about three months, believe that or not. So there you go. So she's like, oh, look at the world. All right, let's go back. That's enough for today. Ba baby <laughs> steps. Baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, she's baby, she baby panda she's steps. Trying to take the panda back in. Mm -hmm. There they go. Yeah. How cute. She's just pacing herself. Yeah, well, come on. Let's go. I like <laughs> that. That's enough for one day. Yeah. Now you've seen the habitat. <laughs> Don't want to mm -hmm. exert yourself. <laughs> nice. That's cute. It is cute. Within time. There's your awe moment for the day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, David Sears. Right <laughs> now, that it is. Come up. That won't be an awe moment. I know, right? Yeah, he's, he's talking about Dallas last night. 909, That's 75 true. degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. It's almost time for open enrollment, but before you sign up, you need to look out for scammers. Ivan Herrera has things to watch out for in today's Money It's Personal. And here's what David was alluding to. First Monday Night Football game for the Cowboys, not great at all. As a matter of fact, it was U-G-L-Y ugly, and that's not your mama's fault. David Sears back the <laughs> newscast to break down what happened. Good morning, I'm Max Massey, and we are here at Port San Antonio where we were talking about big lasers, a big laser that's good for business, good for people, and good for the environment. We'll explain right after the break. Thanks, Max. And taking a look at stocks, the Dow is up 227 points. And welcome back. It is 913. We are in the midst of Startup Week, and one of the staples of the tech community is Port San Antonio. Max Massey joined us live from Port SA. Max, you teased us a little bit. Tell us about a high-tech laser. Yes, guys, right behind me, this behemoth is a huge laser. And here's the thing, it has three great purposes. We're joined here, President and CEO Peter. So, Peter, what exactly does the laser do? Yes, this, is, this system is a laser with a big robot and it removes paint from aircraft. Why is it so important? It's very important as the business value of removing paint by a system is high. It's faster than anything else in the world. And secondly, environmental friendly. We're not using 4,000 gallons of water. We're not using 300 gallons of chemicals, which you have to clean up again. And it's for people very healthy, no unhealthy work situation anymore. That's right. So it keeps people away from those dangerous chemicals. Yeah, keep, keep people away from the chemicals, from the from the poisoning chemicals, and also from Chrome 6, which is uh, giving you cancer when you are enduring that. Why did you guys pick San Antonio? Yeah, we picked San Antonio because Southwest Research Institute helped us in designing this system. This is a fantastic institute, and by that we got in contact with the port, and the port helped us to find this location, and we are really taken care of here. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Peter. And guys, coming up at 930, we are going to tell you the economic impact and how Port San Antonio is only getting bigger and bigger. Guys. Thank you, Max. We look forward to that. As we shift gears and talk weather, uh, it's obviously nowhere near autumn right now, but in some places it's starting <laughs> to look a little bit more like winter, isn't it, Justin? Yeah, we got we to gotta prove it to everybody because it does not feel like fall at all here in South Texas. But look at this. This is in Iowa, eastern parts of Iowa. Heavy snow really came down and it piled up uh, a lot of spots here across the Midwest. And there's still some snow flying this morning. So it is cold across parts of the country, just not here. We can't get that cold air down here. But I think next week we're going to feel some of it, maybe by Monday. That's the hope anyway. Let's take a look at the radar across the country. There's the snow right now. So places like North Dakota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Seeing some heavy snow right now, and this is going to pile up again. 
So they're still getting more wintry weather up there. And that will cause some uh, delays if you're traveling up north. But uh, for us, it's just these light showers. We've seen them off and on this morning. It's a, it's a quick downpour. They don't last very long, but these uh, showers will continue here for another, let's say, hour or so. And then we'll probably see the radar quiet down a little bit. Uh, we did pick up two hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport this morning, so there's a little bit there. Visible satellite picture shows we've got mostly cloudy conditions here around San Antonio, then the clouds are a little thicker out west. This is exactly what we saw yesterday, so expect a very similar day with partly cloudy skies this afternoon and temperatures really warming up. Right now we're at 75. Southerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Humidity is way up there at 90%. It's sticky out there. Dew points in the 70s. Dew point of uh, 72 here in town. And then some upper 60s in the hill country. This humidity is unrelenting and it will not go away until Friday. So I'll caution you there. But once we get our first front through on Friday, it should dry us out a little bit on Saturday. And uh, the, the, again, there is some improvement down the line. Temperatures right now, 70s for the most part, 77 Gonzalez, 76 in Uvalde. That cold air that was bottled up across North Texas yesterday starting to erode some. This is a warm front that will be moving north. So you'll see a lot of these numbers really warm up. Still in the 40s for Amarillo and Lubbock, but they'll see warmer temperatures this afternoon. So here's what our future cast looks like. And again, very similar where uh, we get partly cloudy skies this afternoon and then tomorrow morning clouds build back in. We could see some of that uh, drizzle, maybe a few of those very light showers uh, just like this morning and then uh, partly cloudy by this afternoon. OK, let's go down the line here. 80s most of this week and then here is our first front. This is Friday afternoon. Looks like it should be moving in Friday evening. With this, we'll see a slight cool down, some drier air on Saturday. So this is Saturday at 5 o'clock, some low 80s. Drier air, that'll feel pretty good. Sunday it warms back up, but here's our next front. Right now, we think this will be moving in sometime on Monday. There's still some questions with the timing here, but I think that this is going to be a pretty cool air mass that'll be shifting into Texas, and temperatures will really tumble. We'll get the windy conditions, and I think the better news with this is it looks like it's going to come with some pretty decent rain chances too, which is exactly what we need. So this is something to look forward to next week. In the meantime, we got to still deal with the heat and humidity up around 90 today uh, with partly cloudy skies. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour and the extended forecast. We go 88 Wednesday, 89 Thursday, 88 on Friday. There's the slight cool down Saturday, 82, and then we bump back up near 90 on Sunday. Right now we're going 75, 30 percent chance of rain on Monday, but look for some of those numbers to change as we get a little bit closer and the computer models sort of hone in on what we can expect. We'll keep you posted, guys. Thank you, Justin. We have some breaking news we want to let you know about real quick. That's right. The internet is down at South San Antonio ISD. That's what officials are saying, and they made the announcement through social media. That's right. They uh, say we will keep you posted when the issue is resolved. Case has reached out to the district for comment. We have not yet heard back, but again, uh, online classes are going to be tricky right now down at South San ISD. And for now, it is 919 and still ahead on GMSA at 9. Better Business Bureau warning people about scammers ahead of open enrollment season. Things to look out for when signing up for health insurance. And this week's money, it's personal. 922, welcome back. Omen enrollment is a time when many can sign up for vital health care through their employers or the health insurance marketplace. But it's also a time when scammers prey on people who may not be familiar with purchasing health insurance. Ivan Herrera has some tips on ways to avoid health care scammers in this week's Money It's Personal. This year, open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act runs from November 1st through December 15th. And the Medicare open enrollment runs from October 15th through December 7th. While the deadlines are a few months away, the Better Business Bureau is warning people about scammers who try to steal personal information from those looking for health coverage during this time of year. One scam the BBB is warning about involves a caller claiming to be a health care benefits advocate or using a similar title. The caller will then say they can enroll you in a plan that is cheaper than the one you have without giving up any benefits. In a different version of this scam, the caller may try to frighten you and tell you there's an issue with your health insurance. The crook will then say the only way to fix the issue is by re-enrolling you in your plan. The BBB says you can avoid these types of scams with the following tips. First, be cautious of anyone who contacts you unsolicited. And 
and be especially wary of callers who threaten you to make a payment or require immediate action. Next, decline promotional gifts in exchange for your personal information. And beware of dishonest healthcare brokers who offer free healthcare screenings as this could be a way to weed out people who are less healthy. Make sure to guard your personal information, including your government issued ID number, social security number, or banking information. Finally, if you feel a call is a scam, hang up and visit the healthcare website yourself or call your healthcare provider directly. For more tips, visit bbb.org forward slash healthcare scam. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera. KSAT 12 News. We love Ivan's stories. Right now, it's uh, exactly 925, 75 degrees. And this evening, for the first time ever, NASA will try to get a sample from an asteroid. But how will the mission work? Our Justin Horn speaks to a NASA scientist to find out. You may not be able to go door to door for Halloween this year. So Reese's wants to bring the door to you. How you can get this candy door for your neighborhood. And a rough morning for Cowboys fans. After a terrible loss against the Cardinals, David Sears will be back to give us his thoughts on the boys' performance. I'll cue up the soapbox for Mr. Sears <laughs> and a quick check of the roads as we go to break with Transky looking live at Highway 90 West at Zarzamora. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. So poor Zeke had another night of fumbleitis for the Cowboys who lost big against the Cardinals last night. They were a bigger disappointment than this logo behind us. <laughs> David Sears back with us now, a wow. breakdown Stop. of the game. Wow. I, I'm oh wondering, God. I had a conversation with somebody in the newsroom this morning, and I'm wondering at this point, is Zeke Elliott overrated? Uh, uh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Yo, right? I sure hope he does a better job of hanging onto his wallet because it's filled <laughs> with like $90 million. Remember that contract he signed? Mm -hmm. Now I can't even hang on to a football. So just hang on to your wallet, Zeke. At least do that. All right, so they're taking on the Cardinals last night. First quarter, Andy Dalton under a heavy rush. You got to help him out, Zeke. Where are you? Oh, yeah, you got uh, Boom. <laughs> what, that playing rugby? So what is that? that? Do you remember yesterday what I said yesterday, that they're going to have to have a big game from him? He's going to have to help him out. He didn't help him out one iota. Look at that. Just stripped it. You're supposed mm -hmm. to, you know, cradle the ball. And, and then here we go. Watch this fancy play. That's, you know, uh, Cliff Kingsbury drawing up some fun offense there for the Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury, former Texas Tech head coach, now yeah. Cardinals head coach. Oh, my. He did it again. Zeke fumbled. That was like the next possession for the Cowboys. He fumbled again, mm -hmm. and the Cardinals get it again. You know, the Dallas defense is already struggling. So, let's see. Let's put them in a big hole and see if they can dig out of it because they're so good. Yeah, thanks, Zeke. No, didn't work out. So, here we go. So, you know, Kyler Murray. There he is, former Aggie. Where's Justin? Is Justin paying attention? Yeah, yes, he is. He, he, he's very close. Yeah, he's down to the one. He he's score. aware. So, you know, next play they score. And then watch this. It's just for grins. Zeke <laughs> didn't have to fumble it this time to give it to him. They just took it. And then look at that. That is an 80-yard bomb with four minutes left in the first half. So it's 21 nothing. And then the Cowboys did get a field goal before the half, made it 21-3. But look at that. Just an 80-yard. Wow. 80-yard bomb. He had to stretch out for it. But that's Aggie to Aggie. Right, Justin? Right. Yeah, see, he's proud of that. So there you go. <laughs> so after the game, Zeke did fess up. He didn't have a good game. Kept giving it away. One, I'm giving the ball away. I can't. I wasn't helping the team, and uh, I think it, they did the right thing and, uh, you know, gave gave some of those reps to TP. Um, but, you know, I, I can't. I can't do that. Um, I have to be a guy uh, this team can lean on, you know, especially in the times right now. Uh, you know, with so many of our, our starters hurting and not playing. Um, so it's just, it's, it's not acceptable, um, and I need to figure it out. It's kind of hard to lean on a guy who keeps falling over. That's true. I mean, help you out. It, right after he fumbled the second time, yeah, Pollard came in for, for a few plays, and they kind of put Zeke on the bench. I mean, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, don't, I don't remember who they were playing, he dropped three passes in a row. Mm-hmm. I don't remember who it was either. Yeah. Doesn't really so matter. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with his hands. But in all, <laughs> in all fairness, though, David, out. let's let's spread the blame around. Mm -hmm. Andy Dalton, first starting game. He as, threw two uh, picks. Okay. Uh, okay. Mike McCarthy, first season as Cowboys head coach. Is Jason Garrett smirking somewhere right now? 
Well, no, because his Giants are horrible. <laughs> so, oh, no, sure. not, well, they're, not, they're what, one in five he's now? He's not smirking because the Cowboys <laughs> are in first place yeah. in the NFC East. So That's how bad true. is the NFC East if the Cowboys it's are two and four awful. in first place? It's a horrible division. So they got they got to figure this out. Now, I mean, if you want to give them a break, <laughs> they lost their center last night. Yes. Their mm -hmm. defense is decimated by injuries. I think you got like 11 guys that are out with injuries. So their whole offensive line is, I mean, I love my Texas Tech Red Raiders. They got a guy playing right tackle who is an un, who's, who was a free agent. They just invited him to camp, and now he's starting for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's a rookie. So you just go all the way across the offensive line. They're struggling, but that's why – I say Zeke's got to help them out. These, right. these veteran ball players have to step up and help these guys out. This guy makes $90 million to right. run the ball and score touchdowns. Well, I have a prediction for you, David Sears. Okay. The Dallas Cowboys will get a win this weekend against the Washington Football Club. Where's that game? I don't remember where that one's at. It's in Washington. Mm -hmm. The Washington yes. Football Club. Mm -hmm. All right. well, yep. So the Cowboys get a win this weekend. Four. Yes, hopefully all this so blue will help at, out. Like, like, poor Mark. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. There's your graphic. All right, so. Well, we hope so. All right. So, that will game uh, Sunday at noon. And yes, it appears it is land in Landover, Maryland. You know how bad things are. I'll probably break an ankle stepping off the soapbox. No. Oh, so I'll be careful. Oh. Don't say that. Is that too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Mark. <laughs> Thank you, David. We hope for better news next week. Yes. All right. Thank you, David Sears. Go, go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Outside with live cam. Yeah, still going to get the win this weekend over Washington, for sure. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. Let's see if I can follow this up with some better news. Yes, Yeesh. please. A lot going on there. Okay, let's talk about the state of Texas because temperatures really vary. We've got some warm temperatures down south, 76 in Brownsville, 78 Corpus Christi. You go up to the Panhandle, it's in the 40s right now, 48 in Amarillo. So still pretty chilly there. It's going to warm up for most of the state today. But what we're looking forward to is down the line. We've got a couple fronts that'll head our way, and that'll bring us uh, some chances for rain and some cooler temperatures too. Cloud cover this morning, pretty thick out there. We've got some breaks here around Bear County, so the sun's trying to shine through. We've also got a few quick moving showers, so uh, if you get a quick shower, if you're out and about, don't be surprised. It's not going to last very long, and we'll see a lot of these showers start to go away as we get towards midday. Forecast calls for a high close to 90. And we'll see uh, mostly sunny skies later this afternoon. P partly cloudy to mostly sunny. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to time out these fronts for you, let you know when our next rain chance uh, comes into play. And that's good news. We haven't had rain in a long time. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. That is good news. We look forward to it, Justin. And taking a look out of uh, Trans Guide, there is 281 at Winding Way. Looks like there's some wind out there, but as far as the roads, just a little busy, but not too bad right now. Also at 410 and San Pedro. Early in the newscast, our very own Max Massey showed us a laser company new to San Antonio and one of the newest additions to Port SA. So Max joins us live from Port SA. Max, you've covered a lot of stories there over the years, and what's one of the big takeaways for those at home? Well, one of the big takeaways is just how fast Port San Antonio is growing. We have covered stories about cyber tech, robotics, and now as we have this big laser joined here, CEO and president of Port San Antonio, Jim Pershbach. So, Jim, what does it mean to you guys to get to this company? It's fantastic because it's ground changing for aircraft maintenance. It's not just the environmental and the occupational safety benefits, it's the time benefits. 60% less time to strip an aircraft than traditional methods. And with this technology, once you've figured out how to do it on airplanes, you can do it on anything. What does this mean big picture for the Alamo City? It means that we are leading the way about incorporating new technologies into the mature industries that we do so well. And what this is the type of stuff is it creates those economic opportunities that bring jobs back to San Antonio, that create opportunities, and show we're on the right track by investing in education. Now we're kind of in one of the far corners of the port here. We see there's a lot of open land. You guys have big projects on the horizon? We do. The Innovation Center is going to open in just a little over a year. We've got some exciting announcements we can't quite talk about yet. But using these back areas, these hidden areas, you're going to see an awful lot of this type of groundbreaking research going on. All right, Jim, thank you so much. And guys, there you have it. Port San Antonio helping the Alamo City out one business at a time. Mark, Stephanie. Thanks, Max. Glad to see it growing. Right now, it's just about 937, 75 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9. And let's head over to Justin Horn, who has a preview of what's coming up next. A big day for NASA. They're doing something very interesting. And we're going to tell you what they're going to do and what it means for us here on Earth. That's coming up.
And it's a big day for NASA. It's going to be an important day, too. We're talking to Jim Garvin, who is a NASA Goddard chief scientist. And what's happening today is NASA's first asteroid sample return mission, OSIRIS-REx, will attempt to collect a sample from an asteroid named Bennu, I think I'm saying that correctly, to bring back to Earth. So tell us what's going to happen today. So today, a magical spacecraft, a marvel of engineering, will descend from orbit and approach and do a high five on the surface of an asteroid about the size of 10 city blocks. And in doing so, it will collect materials, specially by human beings, collect those materials from this primitive object, package them up, and get ready to send them home to Earth so we can get to know these small planetary neighbors that help our planet become the way it is. That's fascinating. I feel like I've seen this in a movie before. So how tricky is today's maneuver to collect these samples? It's absolutely mind boggling. It's a marvel of engineering that we can approach and almost dock with an asteroid about the size of, you know, a small set of city blocks, touch it, sample the materials in a five second maneuver, back away and then return those materials back to Earth for the women and men of future generations to study. It's kind of a gift that keeps on giving. Wow, and, and just a quick question there. How can OSIRIS-REx catch up to this asteroid? Well, it's a, again, a marvel of, of what we call space flight, flight dynamic engineering. We picked an asteroid that was just the right kind, in the right place, with the right stuff to go and do this mission, which is really historic. And I think the people of planet Earth will be stunned by the materials we bring back to learn about the origins, or even potentially the origins of life. Okay, so th this is a tough mission. What happens if you're not able to collect the sample today? So we have backup plans. It, it's kind of like a football game. We'll call an audible. We'll make a correction if it looks too rugged. We have other attempts that we'll be able to make later this, uh, win uh, later this winter in December. And then again, we have backup landing sites or, touch or high five sites. So we have contingencies on contingencies. That's why this mission is a perfect intersection of science and engineering coming together to do this kind of stuff. And I think you kind of already alluded to this, but why was Bennu chosen? Why, why this asteroid? Because it's in the right place and it's made of the right stuff. Bennu has, we think, surface materials that are enriched in organics, stuff made of carbon and other, other uh, elements. And so being able to go and touch them in their pristine state, not modified by passage through the rest of the solar system, as time capsules makes it perfect. So we can get there, we can get the right stuff, and we can get home. That's a perfect asteroid. And science is incredible. One quick last question. How can viewers watch today's event unfold? So we have www.nasa.gov, NASA Live, with live streaming of this event, which will occur later this afternoon and evening, depending on where you live. Um, and then there'll be web updates and social media updates. And at Osiris Rex uh, is another site you can go on social media to see all about this. Come join the fun. It's going to be epic. Awesome. Uh, Jim Garvin, NASA Goddard Chief Scientist, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Pretty interesting interview. Now, the yeah. best thing about it, I think, mm -hmm. uh, other than the fact it's a, such a technological marvel, Justin, yeah. is that you actually found a rocket scientist that can talk on a normal person's level. <laughs> yeah, like great, how he compared it? it to He's football. He's like, yeah. our spaceship's going to high five that rock. <laughs> it, it was perfect. It was. Got it. He it did was. a great job. And uh, I was I was going to ask if Bruce Willis was going to be manning the thing. Right, but, uh, right, right. <laughs> and Affleck and all those other guys. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but fascinating stuff. The, the fact that they can do that is yeah. just incredible incredible to me. Okay, let's jump into the forecast. Uh, we've got uh, time lapse here showing that uh, the cloud cover was here this morning. We had showers. Uh, it was sort of drizzly and humid. Those clouds are already starting to break up. We've seen this story. This is exactly what happened yesterday, and this is probably what's going to happen next few days with this forecast. We're just kind of stuck where we are for right now. Changes don't come till the end of the week. 75 degrees right now. Southerly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Dew point is at 72. In the visible satellite picture shows quite a bit of cloud cover, especially as you get out west. Del Rio, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, you're cloudy right now. Here around San Antonio, clouds are trying to break up a little bit. We see some breaks here and there. And so mostly cloudy, and these clouds will continue to sort of scatter out as we get into the afternoon. As far as showers go, we do have a few out there. We've picked up a few 
quick passing downpours, but these are starting to uh, sort of fade away a little bit here too, and I don't think that these will be with us all day long. Most of these will probably go away by the afternoon. 77 right now, Comfort, 72 Bernie State, 76 in Hondo, 78 New Braunfels. It's warm, 76 in Austin, 78 Gonzales. You get the idea here, and uh, dew points are in the 60s and 70s, so very, very sticky. And I would like to tell you that the dew points would come down the next few days. You're just not going to. Uh, not until Saturday. So on Saturday, you notice the dew points down here at 55. We get a front coming through Friday afternoon. Jumps back up Sunday, and then we get a stronger front Monday. That will knock the dew points back down. So there is some relief on the way. We just got to wait a few days. Forecast for this afternoon around 5 o'clock. We should be in the upper 80s, close to 90. Uh, we'll see some 90s on the map for sure, especially down to the south and west. We saw that yesterday. We got to touch on the tropics. There is a tropical storm out there, Epsilon. It is uh, trying to track towards Bermuda. Looks a little ragged. Uh, there is another system here that uh, is in the Caribbean. Right now, only about a 10% chance of development. This doesn't look great. It's getting sheared apart, and it's moving west. So I don't think it... Uh, will have any impact on us here in Texas, but uh, just something to watch. Here's the forecast going forward. 80s most of this week until Friday, or at least Friday evening, we'll start to see these numbers come down a little bit as the front comes through. On Saturday, low 80s, uh, a little bit of a change, but there will be drier air in place. Saturday will actually be pretty nice. Sunday, it warms back up. And then Monday, here comes the stronger front. Right now, the bottles are starting to become more agreement. On the timing here, we think Monday morning uh, with the passage of this cold front, but that is subject to change. We're still a ways away. We do know that it will be chilly behind this front. We'll get some gusty northerly winds. And the best news of all, I think, this front will likely come with some rain chances. Right now we have a 30% chance of rain. My hope is that we'll get to bump that number up as we get a little bit closer because we need some rain here across South Texas for sure. Temperatures today. Up around 90, partly cloudy skies. The extended forecast, we go 88 tomorrow, 89 Thursday, 88 on Friday. That front comes through. A little cooler Saturday, close to 90 on Sunday. And right now we're going 75 on Monday. Windy, 30% chance of showers. I think the numbers, you'll start to see those trend down. The rain chances trend up if everything continues the way the computer models are showing right now. So uh, we'll keep you posted throughout the week. Thank you, Jess. And uh, we have more breaking news, a developing story out of Houston. Yes, we are hearing that two police officers have been shot. Uh, this is according to Police Chief Art Acevedo. He sent out a note on Twitter saying, we have two officers struck by gunfire. Please pray more to follow. Uh, happening in southwest Houston. If you are from the Houston area, this is all going down right now. The 2600 block of Holly Hall. Police say a suspect remains at large and officers are asking, asking people to avoid that area. Our sister station KPRC will be tracking this story, so we'll be providing updates throughout the day right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. And we'll be right back. Welcome back, 951. A new Netflix drama stars Anya Taylor-Joy as a child chess prodigy. CNN's Rick Domagella has a look at The Queen's Gambit. Tell the readers of life how it feels and to be a girl. Among all those men. I don't mind it. Chess isn't always competitive. Chess can also be beautiful. Anya Taylor-Joy stars as a chess prodigy in the Netflix limited series, The Queen's Gambit, based on the Walter Tevis novel. There's no player in the world as gifted as you are. There is one player that scares me. Who? I was not a chess player before this. I had never played chess. Um, and now my opening game is very strong. It all falls apart towards end game, but opening very strong. I'd like, I, I sort of adopted Beth's tactic, which is come out strong and intimidate the other player and hope that they don't call your bluff on it. Taylor Joy was so serious about the role of Beth Harmon, she took it before the script was even finished, telling writer-director Scott Frank. And the first two things I said was, it's not all about chess and she has to be a redhead. Because in the visual form of storytelling that we were going to be presenting the story, I wanted her Genius to stick out like a sore thumb. I wanted it to be a physical representation of how she felt on the inside, which is that no matter where she was, she was always separate or different. You should see the places they play in the Soviet Union. Oh, I'm planning on it. You have to get past me first. I'm planning on that too. Playing the Sicilian defense in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
All right, check this out. Trick or treaters usually go door to door, right? But this year the door <laughs> may be coming to them. So Reese's has launched a robotic door that will roll down neighborhood streets, handing out king sized candy bars. Wow. Kids just need to say trick or treat and the door will dispense the candy through a mail slot. What else can 2020 <laughs> come up with? <laughs> That's the, cool though. The door also features a Halloween soundtrack, lights and even smoke. It will be remote controlled by someone up to 5,000 feet away. All right, so if you want the door to come to your neighborhood, Reese says visit its Instagram page and leave the location in the comments section. Good luck. Very cool. And do you know someone who has stepped up for others in Bear County during the COVID-19 pandemic through kind deeds? If so, our Quesa Community Partners and the United Way of San Antonio wants you to submit an application for its Community Champion Spirit of Essay Awards. The award recognizes individuals whose volunteer efforts have made a significant impact during the pandemic. United Way is accepting nominations through this Friday. That's the 23rd. They're asking people to create a video that includes the name of the nominee and how they've impacted the community. For more details on how to submit a nomination, just go to ksatcommunity.com. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Matthew McConaughey joins us. Yeah, the Academy Award winning actor talks about his new book, Green Lights. We'll see you soon here on live. And 77 right now, close to 90 this afternoon, upper 80s, close to 90 each and every day this week until we get to the weekend, a little cooler on Saturday, and then we're awaiting a bigger front next week. All right. Apparently, some of you have started to shop till you drop. Yeah, not me, but according to this article, uh, boredom prompts half of Americans to start holiday shopping early. That's right. According to a new study, nearly half of Americans have already begun shopping online for the holidays, and the reason is simple. People are bored <laughs> with the pandemic disrupting daily. <laughs> life and limiting travel and forcing folks to work from home. A significant chunk of the population is planning on being more productive as we head into the holiday season. So it's out of 2000 Americans surveyed, 47% responded that they were using or plan to use the extra downtime uh, because of the pandemic to get a head start. Yes. Well, some people said they were waiting until October to begin. About 15% admitted they actually started Christmas shopping back in August. Yeah, that's crazy. So due to heightened awareness about avoiding crowds and crowded areas, about half of the polls respondents said they plan on doing their holiday shopping entirely online. This all year. of there. So it's going to be all online. This yeah, year I can. For, I can see that. Oh, yeah, I was already there. You're already there. I was. Oh, I was there in years past. <laughs> I was way ahead of the curve on on doing all of my shopping online. Just don't want to deal with the stores. So much yeah, it's yeah. understandable. It, it is. But you know what? I was in a store the other day and it was kind of cool to get out and kind of see what merchandise was actually there. It was a nice break, I'm sure. It was. <laughs> Closer to normal. Yeah. Have a great day, guys.